Welcome to Too Fond of Books. My name is Janelle and this is the penultimate Cloak and Dagger Christmas recommendations video. I have been loving doing these recommendation videos for you and I hope that you've enjoyed them and have found some books that you want to read for Cloak and Dagger Christmas. For today's prompt, I am going to recommend books for the Agatha Raisin prompt for read a mystery that features an amateur sleuth. There are so many amateur sleuth mysteries and I really like a lot of them. So I really had to contain myself here and not go crazy with the recommendations. So let's just dive straight into this. The first one I want to recommend is the Thursday Murder Club series by Richard Osman. I've read the first one, <clears throat> um, The Thursday Murder Club. This is the second one that I'm reading right now, The Man Who Died Twice. And this is a fantastic amateur sleuth series. You could double up on your prompts if you want to read these too because this would also count for mysteries that feature a great team or partnership um, because the people, the people in this one are so good. So this takes place in a retirement village and there are four four people in the Thursday Murder Club, Elizabeth, Joyce, Ron, and Ibrahim, and, um, and it's, so, it's so good. So they meet weekly, they have this murder club at the retirement village where they seek to solve old cases, cold cases. Um, so rather than doing kind of some of the normal activities that you might expect to see at a retirement village, these these four want to solve mysteries and in the first book they got the opportunity to do that when there was a murder at their um at their retirement village someone connected to their retirement village i really liked the the first book i thought it was witty and funny with great characters and a pretty good mystery and so i'm really looking forward to uh, diving into this second one <clears throat> Next up for Amateur Sleuth, we have Miss Seaton. I know I talk about her a lot, but I love Miss Seaton. She is fantastic. And how can I not have a recommendations video for Amateur Sleuths and not talk about Miss Seaton? She is um, a retired art teacher who lives in a village. So you could double up here too and use these for the prompt of mysteries that are set in a village. I love, I love Miss Seaton. She's just, she's just so good. And the tone of the books are fantastic too. They're very lighthearted mysteries uh, with really great side characters as well. So this is a series that started with five books that Heron Carvick wrote between 1968 and 1975. And this one is Witch Miss Seaton. I believe it's potentially the second one that he wrote. Um, <clears throat> and then the series was picked up in 1990 by Hampton Charles. And Hampton Charles wrote three books in 1990 in the series. And this one is Advantage Miss Seaton. And then it was picked up again by Hamilton Crane, who wrote 17 books between 1991 and 2019. This one is called Miss Seaton's Final Hour. And in this one, they go back in time to a young Miss Seaton during World War II. And so I'm actually really excited to get to this one. I haven't read this one yet, but um, I like that idea of uh, of a younger Miss Seaton uh, during World War II. <clears throat> so if you've never given Miss Seaton a try, I highly recommend them. They are very entertaining. Next up, we have the Lady Lupin Mysteries by Joan Coggan. There are only four in the series. So if you can get a hold of them, um, it's a nice quick series to read and at least two are set at Christmas, which is perfect. So she wrote Who Killed the Curate in 1944. So this could also be a nice crossover with Golden Age Mysteries as well as 
uh, using it for an amateur sleuth. Um, Lady Lupin is the amateur sleuth. She is married to the vicar of St. Mark's Parish in Glanville, Sussex. And these, again, are really fun, really lighthearted, fun mysteries with great characters. And so if you're looking for a Christmas option, uh, these could be these could be good. Um, and then she wrote The Mystery at Orchard House in 1946. I don't have that one. And then she wrote Dancing with Death in 1947. And this one is also set at Christmas. And then Penelope Passes or Why Did She Die that she wrote in 1947. So three of them take place after World War II, but it's close enough. You can totally count any of these for the Golden Age prompt. All right, and then we have <clears throat> the Sheila Mallory series by Hazel Holt. I've only read a couple so far in this series, but I have a whole bunch of them that I found at book sales and stuff. and. Uh, uh, that I'm gonna I'm collecting and I'm gonna, I'm gonna read them all eventually. This is the first one called Mrs. Mallory Investigates. Mrs. Mallory is an amateur sleuth. Um, and there are 21 books in this series written between 1989 and 2014 and she lives in um, a town or a village and I'm not even entirely sure where in England but but these ones do take place in England and Mrs. Mallory is a fun amateur, a fun amateur sleuth. <clears throat> okay. And then a new, a new series, um, then there's only two out so far, is the Lily Adler series by Katherine Shellman. This is the first one, The Body in the Garden, and there is another one just out called Silence in the Library. And uh, yeah, the, this one was written in 2020 and then Silence in the Library is, 20, is 2021. Um, and Lily Adler is uh, an amateur sleuth. These are historical mysteries and it says in here that they're perfect for fans of Tasha Alexander and Reese Bowen. So if that's helpful for you for figuring out the, the type of mystery that it is. This takes place in London in 1815. So we can't count them for Victorian mysteries because they're a little too early. They take place in the Georgian era though and um, I quite like that. Lily Adler is widowed and um, and gets involved in <laughs> in solving mysteries. So this is a fun amateur sleuth series, um, especially if you like historical mysteries along with your amateur sleuths. And continuing in that vein of amateur sleuth historical mysteries, this is the Eliza Doolittle and Henry Higgins series by D.E. Ireland. I've only read this first one in the series so far, um, but I really, really liked it. This is called Wouldn't It Be Deadly? There are four books in the series between 2014 and 2018, and they, fe they feature Eliza Doolittle and Henry Higgins, um, made famous, of course, in My Fair Lady, um, but they are originally from Pygmalion. I think it's Pygmalion, is that right? Um, and so yeah, these are these, these are just they're just they're just fun. They're just really really fun. And then how can I not talk about Agatha Raisin for the Agatha Raisin prompt? This is the first in the series called The Quiche of Death. There are 32 in the series between 1992 and 2021. And uh, Agatha Raisin uh, was a PR executive in London who uh, retires at the beginning of this book and buys a cottage in the Cotswolds and she just wants to dive into village life and she's such a great character because she's she's in her 50s and she's kind of grumpy and <laughs> 
Um, and awesome. I, I like Agatha Raisin. And boy, is she ever nosy. She just she just gets her nose into all, all the situations. Um, so this one's the first one in the series, The Quiche of Death. Um, to highlight a Christmas one, this is Kissing Christmas Goodbye, which is the 18th in the series from 2007. There's also a novella from 2012 called Christmas Crumble, if you want to try uh, a shorter a shorter version. Okay, and then we have the Honey Church Hall series by Hannah Dennison. There are eight between 2014 and 2020. One. And these are modern day, like contemporary mysteries. I always, I look at the covers and the, the titles and I get the impression that it's historical, but it's not. The main character is Kat Stanford and she wants to start an antique business with her mom who is newly widowed and um, she finds out that her mom has purchased this dilapidated carriage house at Honey Church Hall, which is an isolated country estate like a, a few hundred miles away from London. And so she and they end up they end up of course having to go and move there and they meet the inhabitants of the mansion and um you know stuff happens and so um it's been a long time since I've read this one and I'm not entirely sure if I continued on with the series or if I just read one or two. Um, I'll have to look into that, but uh, that's another good um, amateur sleuth series. And then, uh, uh, <laughs> this one is really fun. This is the Book Collector series by Victoria Abbott. There are five in the series between 2013 and 2016. The first one is called The Christie Curse, which is of course what drew my attention to this series in the first place. So the main character in this series, she gets a job at this grumpy old lady's house um, working on her collection. So this, this lady has a collection and is building a collection of rare or, and first edition mysteries and potentially golden age, but maybe not solely, I can't remember. Um, and each book in the series is connected to a, di a different famous book. So the Christie curse, so that's Agatha Christie, the Sayers swindle, Dorothy L. Sayers, the wolf widow. Um, who is that now? Who would wolf be? Nero wolf, maybe? Um, the Marsh Madness, Naya Marsh, and the Hammett Hex, um, you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't, I just completely black, oh, Dashiell Hammett, sorry. <laughs> so this is a cozy mystery series that's set in the United States, and um, our main character has this hilarious set of uncles who are kind of petty criminals who are regular characters in the stories as well. Those ones are really fun. Okay, and then we have The Cabinets of a Barnaby May, Barnaby Maine, um, from Elsa Hart. This came out in 2020. This is a historical mystery with an amateur sleuth. This is set in London in 1703. In a time when the old approaches to science coexist with the new, one elite community attempts to understand the world by collecting its wonders. Sir Barnaby Maine, the most formidable of these collectors, has devoted his life to filling his cabinets. While the curious-minded vie for invitations to study the rare stones, bones, books, and artifacts, he is amassed. Um, some visitors come with a darker purpose. So Cecily Kay is our main character. She is a botanist. She is a passion for plants and that's what takes her to the main house. And there is a murder and she is um, investigating. I quite enjoyed this one as well and I hope that there are more in the series. I'm not sure at this point it's just a standalone. I'm not entirely sure if it's even intending to be a series but I would read more if there were more. Okay, and then we have the Inishowen series by Andrea Carter. 
There are five books in this series between 2015 and 2019. This is the first one called Death at Whitewater Church. These are set in the very north of Ireland and the main character is Benedicta O'Keefe and she goes by Ben. She is a solicitor and she makes the joke that she is the solicitor in the, the northernmost, she has the northernmost solicitor's practice in Ireland. Um, and then she jokes that she's the last chance for, yeah, last legal advice before Iceland. She jokes that she would put that on her business cards. <laughs> So this is a fun series, so she's, she's a solicitor who ends up getting involved in these mysteries, therefore she's an amateur sleuth. I enjoy these, I enjoy the setting of Ireland, and um, uh, yeah, although I have only read this first one, but I did quite enjoy it. And then last but not least, we have the Molly Murphy series by Reese Bowen. There are 18 in this series between 2001 and um the next one, the 18th, is coming out in 2022. Um, this one, Molly Murphy, is our amateur sleuth. She is an immigrant from Ireland um, who comes to New York City, and these take place in like the very, very late 1800s, early 1900s. This one, in a way, in a manger, is the 15th book in the series, and it is 1905 in this book. So if you're looking for Christmas ones to read from the series, we have Away in a Manger, and then The Ghosts of Christmas Past from 2017. This is the 17th one in the series. She meets a man called Daniel Sullivan, who is a detective on the police force. And, um, and yeah, so this is another fun historical mystery series. Um, and you do get a combination, I guess, of amateur sleuthing and actual police detectives because of Daniel, but our main character is Molly and she's an amateur sleuth. So there you have it. Those are just a few recommendations from me for the amateur sleuth prompt. Um, so let's chat in the comment section down below. Do you enjoy amateur sleuth mysteries? I, I quite enjoy them myself and um, I would love to have some recommendations from you uh, of some of your favorite amateur sleuths in the mystery world. And I will see you for another video soon. Bye.